Rich Minlo and I'm the fish vet. Today I'm going to bring myself home some pet axolotls. I'm going to choose four of them, all different colors, and see how they go. So here are some juvenile ones. You can see uh, they're just lying there, motionless, but they're pretty cute. Uh, and, but what we're going to do is we've got a 450 liter tank uh, with a cycled filtration, so we're going to get ourselves some vegans. So here we are at the pond section of the fish shop. You can see we have ourselves a lot of different kinds of axolotls. We've got a sort of brown looking one, a pale whitish looking one, and a few black ones here. Yeah. And what you'll notice is that now it's a sort of it's spring season, the water is warming up and the axolotls are, have been busy actually trying to reproduce. So uh, if you have a close look at the plants here, you can see uh, some developing ovaries or developing eggs. Yeah. Can you get a nice picture out already? Yes, have you? Mr. Banana, but it's a missus. Didn't you want to get a female, a girl one? No. You want a boy one, you want a Mr. Banana. The bananas are yellow. <laughs> there you go, Mr. Banana. Oh, she's beautiful. Interesting facts about axolotls, they're actually extinct in nature and the species is kept alive by the aquarium trade with people breeding and keeping them. They can live for up to 10 to 18 years and grow up to 30 centimeters or one foot in length. So how do you tell a male from a female axolotl? Basically, you flip them over and examine the cloaca. Pictured on the left is a female. You can see the cloaca is smooth and flat. Whereas for the male, they have a prominent cloacal bulge between the legs. You also notice the picture on the right. You can see there are some lines. These are the costal grooves and they're quite a lot deeper or more enhanced or prominent in the male. And if they look at the female, their body is also broader or rounder. And that's because she's carrying eggs. They're beautiful, aren't they? What we've done is we've got our axolotls uh, pumped up in some oxygen for the trip home. And we're just going to get a box to put them in so that they don't stress out, um, sort of being suspended in air like this. It can probably freak them out a little bit, so we're going to put them down gently and put them in box for the travel home. All right, we're now back at my house. Uh, this is a tank, it's 450 liters for our four axolotls. Uh, in this tank, you'll notice we've got a piece of limestone that uh, is to make sure that the general hardness as well as the carbonate hardness and the pH remains fairly high, um, moderate to moderately high. Uh, the reason for this is where they come from in their natural environment, they receive ice melt from the mountain so the water as they come down through the mountainous streams they'll be dissolving a lot of minerals and also carbonates and things like that so uh, the pH that they really prefer is on the alkaline side maybe pH 7.5 to 8 uh, they can tolerate lower pH but we're, we prefer to keep them as close to what's natural for them as we can the general hardness as well with the limestone it's calcium carbonate so that's going to contain a lot of calcium and we can also top it up with a little bit of epsom salts for the magnesium portion if we need to but in perth our general tap water that comes out from our, yeah, our tap supply it's got it's moderately hard already anyway so the first thing we want to do is with our axolotls uh, we've got two here yet to be named. Maybe you'd like to name them. Uh, so feel free to 
leave some comments on some good names. So what we're doing here, the first portion is actually to put them into the tank. Uh, this is to equalize the water temperature. And we're going to do this with both bags. Uh, these bags here, as you can see, they were in, uh, inflated with oxygen. So this allows them to stay in the, t in the bags for a considerable amount of time. With the bags, uh, when you're floating them and also when you're transporting, it's preferable to actually have them in a horizontal position. And the reason for that is that you'll see that there's going to be more surface area um, of the water that's going to be exposed to the air or oxygen that's in the bags. And this allows for gas exchange um, a lot more, a uh, greater area for gas exchange. So we'll have a look at our axolotls from the bottom up and the other guy that we have yet to name is this little brown guy over here the common name for axolotls is Mexican walking fish but in fact they're not a fish at all they're an amphibian related to your frogs and toads an interesting fact about axolotls is that they can regenerate their limbs and they are being used in medical research to investigate how this is so so I'm going to be feeding my axolotls once every couple of days. I may increase the frequency or the quantity based, I'll be guided by their appetite. And I'm going to feed them a variety of foods, including earthworms, manufactured feed pellets, and also slivers of fish. Well, that's all from me, Mr. Banana, Pikachu, and two yet unnamed axolotls. Make sure you like, share and subscribe to get updates of our future videos and have a fantastic week.